your deed. And so most people think a deed is a lodeo, correct? So they work all their life, pay this house off, and they think they got a, uh, an allodial piece of property because they got a deed. Well, a deed is a rental fee under feudal law. It's not a, it's not a title of possession. In other words, you're, you're possessively caretaking for it, which is why, yes, which is why after you receive that deed, you still pay taxes at a high rate that's just as big as your mortgage when you first started paying because you never own it. It belongs to the state corporation, but they own it because they own you. You, you see how that, simple that is? And, then, and, and I'm saying that so that you don't get caught up in the emotionalism of looking at the, the objects, but recognize it's actually your status that establishes that anything you own belongs to the state, including your, your children. And so the marriage license is, is another instrument that's used the same way, same with the birth certificate. The birth certificate is used so the corporation or the plantation claims the birth of the child like you get a certificate and it'll say, um, born in the state of New Jersey. Say, born in Camden, in the state of New Jersey. So that means the Camden Municipal Corporation gave you birth, being subject to the New Jersey State Corporation established in 1844, and that's your mother. And, and that's a certificate where the mother signs the child over to the hospital who is in cahoots with the state under the Christian Black Codes and they regulate and they're like spies, they tell everything and they operate together. Now you look back into the Christian Black Codes of 1724 and you see the absolute relationship between the hospital and the state. Alright? So the offspring of the womb automatically belongs to the state and so that you don't feel uncomfortable instead of saying slave they'll call it W-A-R-D, ward of the state. So the, 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 the child being state property, that instrument or that um, birth certificate being that's their property under commercial auspices is transferred into a stock. And so at birth, that child, I think as of now, was about 20 years ago was about 16,000. So about now it's probably 30 some odd thousand dollars or representative 35,000 units that when the child is born and, and that certificate is put on them, that burden is already put on that child. So what they do, they borrow against it, project it on the tax that they c expect to get from that thing during this life cycle. All right? So... Uh, last I was reading, it was $630,000. 630000 now? 30, yeah, just cause it, yeah, that's because it accelerated exponentially. And they have on the birth certificate mother or other informant. Yes, yeah. They will form it. Yes, and they're agents. And also when, when those... Um, those things, and, 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 and remember, and don't take offense, um, from a political perspective, they're listed as it, they're not listed as people. Yes. Negroes, blacks, and colored are listed in government and in military as it. And also, if they, if they get, if they are neutralized in, in a war or conflict, they're listed as advisors. So if you see in any conflict where a certain amount of persons uh, are neutralized and they say so many advisors died, they're Asiatics of Asiatic African birth. They're not listed as citizens. This is also why um, they have a difficulty, as, as you see over the years, you see different wars go up uh, that take place and you see different people start movements to try to get um, these people recognized and, and all this stuff, you know, from Troop 54, from the Civil War and all that kind of stuff, and they're doing all kind of stuff to get them recognized. The reason why they're not, because they're not citizens, they're property. They're property of the citizens. Whoever's name they bear, that's bonded. They're, they're under liens and bonds from birth. So they're born in sin. And born in sin does not mean like, you know, right and wrong. Born in sin means born in ignorance. Sin is ancient Hebrew. And, it's, and when they translate, just like when they translate the Bible, they, they don't translate the culture. They translate European romantic culture and interject Constantine's principles when in actuality that means ignorance. Sin is ignorance or lack of knowledge. All right, so keep that in mind. But one of the things, one of the things, are, and, and one of the reasons why uh, I'm giving you these points, and I want you to really take them to heart, because what we want to do eventually is get most of the Asiatics conscious so that we can solve both the profiling problem, because we're going to do a national suit.
class action. And then we're going to world court, too. But the deal is, we want to get the people conscious on a local level, and then we want to give them enough information so they can start fighting cases even on the very local level, elemental, municipal level. So keep in, this, keep in mind that um, the driver's license comes under excise taxation. And the fact that it expires proves what to you relative to identity? Does your identity expire? Can your identity expire? Well, why does your identity expire with the driver's license? Because it's not an identification card. It's a proof of contract information. It's a prima facie article, instrument, used to regulate your economy. Do you understand? See, for instance, like this. Now, sis, all right, say, say, say we're married, right? And you're our children. And we're struggling to try to make it do, do our thing, right? They regulate what you, what you produce. How? Because they already know that you don't really have money. Because it's all bookkeeping. So they got all the records on you, and the IRS is a private corporation of 12 sections. It's 12 corporations in sections that are operating for, for the um, European uh, corporate slaveholders, Transfer, translated from the uh, plantations to the corporations. It is not the government of the United States Republic. Don't confuse that. It's private corporations who are bill collectors for Congress people and other people who have investments in chattel property. Many which have been received by primogeniture. That means the principle of slavery was passed down to generations. So you inherit that no different than you inherit real estate. And they come under the same principles. So you must understand this is not opinion, it's law. And by you not knowing this is how a lot of our people in the small communities are always taken advantage of, and they call it prejudice. But prejudice is put out there for you to divert the attention from what's really happening to you. You know, so like if somebody's stealing, if somebody stole the factory that you're supposed to get from your mother, they start an organization for the National Association of Colored People's Cookie Stealing Things so you don't steal as many cookies as they did last year and you call it progress. And, and you say, well, why would they even help us and then give us some contributions and, and stuff like that, some tax, some, you know, 501c3 tax benefits so that we can do this organization that actually condemns them? It's because they're diverting you from the big load. because they already know it's against the divine laws of nature and that the nature of the being is to rebel. It's, it's against nature. So if they give you something to divert your energies, your energies makes an agreement ethereally with the atmosphere. And then all is well because you say it is, but it is not. And so that takes the karmic load off of him and you accept it in a contract that you don't know is a contract. And you think that you're doing right. And when you violate, he tells you you broke the law. And you don't even know it has nothing to do with law whatsoever. The contract makes the law. Are, are, we, are you clear? Are you following me? I don't want to get past anyone because it's very important that you understand these concepts. And you understand these concepts that I'm telling you for correction are ancient. They're ancient pr principles of civilization from the great law of the great peace from which the Constitution that governs this land in this day was adopted from. They didn't draft this document up from some Englishman that was trying to find some religious freedom. No, Moors, 35 Moors and 20 European sons in agreement to stop the continuous wars between the Muslim Moors and the Christian Crusaders to stop these hundreds of years wars established the United States Republic of North America as a beacon light for the entire civilized world, which is what that Constitution absolutely represents. So understand, you're part of this thing. Don't look at that Constitution as being just for the European sons. It is not. They took it that way and projected that way to you. 
So when they come at you that way, you correct it. But believe me, if you're using his name, you have no standing in law, no judicial standi. And so the Constitution does not apply to you. And so when you look at certain problems that we're having, and we keep saying that we, we don't have due process rights, etc., it is because you're 